Welcome to the Kim B. Davis Show. Here we'll talk to the leaders in technology, culture, business, and the arts. We'll cover politics, advocacy, motherhood, writing, mental health, and mostly we'll focus on hope. Join Kim B. Davis, author, playwright, radio personality, event consultant, professional speaker on the Kim B. Davis Show. Good evening and welcome to the Kim B. Davis Show. I am your host, Kim B. Davis, and this evening it is my pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Anita Caprice. She is a poet, wordsmith, calligrapher, and author, and she is a dynamo of energy, positive energy. She's like the, the Duracell battery for positivity. So I want to say good evening, Dr. Anita. How are you? Oh, good evening, Kimberly. Thank you, my sister. Bless your heart. I'm doing wonderful. I am doing wonderful. And th uh, hey, everybody. Hope all of, everybody is just vibing on one of those nice and groovy, smooth vibrations this evening. <laughs> See, that, and that's what I'm talking about. And so tonight we are talking about good vibes and positivity. And so before we get started, tell people who Dr. Anita Caprice is. Okay, well, first and foremost, um, you know, other than being a child of God, Amen. I'm a mom to a to beautiful twin girls. I just, they're, I, they're my chickadees. I am um, grandma to precious five and mom to two wonderful sons-in-law. So I'm really blessed with the family that I have. I serve, um, uh, what I do is I serve as a Michigan Unemployed Appeals Advocate. So I've been helping uh, people with uh, unemployment get their unemployment benefits for about mm, since 2004. Uh, let's see, I am a poet. Yes, I'm a poet. I've been writing poetry just about all my life. As, 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 as long as I can remember, me and a, a friend of mine uh, used to say that we were cousins. We would sit on the porch. I remember the cement steps, right? And we just write and exchange in our poetry and everything. And uh, yeah, calligrapher, self-taught calligrapher. That, And I have pieces of what I do with my calligraphy. I um, uh, create portraits of poetic affirmations from my poetry and then frame, and also biblical, anything positive. Mm -hmm. And then I'll just frame them. So I do that. Uh, let's see. Oh my gosh. Let's see. Um, poet, calligrapher, so, um, metaphysician. Let's see. I, I'm, I just, uh, I believe I am an energy, uh, just an energy gal. I just believe in the energy. I believe in once we know that it works, and when we work with it, it is going to work with us. And time and time and time and time and time again, God has shown, yes, ma'am, you are on the right track. I Amen. believe, yes, yeah. I believe in also too, I, I, years ago when I was younger, I used to be teased because people would say, oh, you know, you live life through rose colored glasses, you know, because I, you know, that's just the way I did, you know, and everything was working for me, you know, and I didn't think anything of it until, um, you know, and then of course, as people would say it, I said, you know, maybe, maybe I am being a little naive. Maybe I am being gullible. Maybe, maybe I need to change my concept and all that kind of stuff. So I started looking at life differently. Well, I'm going to share something with you, sis. I'm 64 years of age and it is at 64 years of age. It, it dawned on me. You know what? You had it right then because I didn't realize it then, but things would come to me. When I flipped that script and started looking at the world differently, like, like being in it and not, you know, just being, I'm being up it and not in it. Then I had to start looking. I had to start chasing my dream. But before I looked at it with rose colored glasses, my dream was coming to me. And now today, as I said, I started praying. I said, Father, you know, Father, Mother, God, let me, I want to, I want to see life through rose colored glasses again. I said, because I believe that was the way to go. And ever since I've been praying that and, and looking at it, things have, have shifted again. I said, see, and I know, it's, and look, looking at life through rose colored glasses doesn't mean, oh, everything's peachy king and everything because th roses have thorns, right? They sure do. We just know, we just know I, I'm learning that every single challenge and obstacle that comes my way, I know it's for my greater good. And that I may not understand it at that point, but I know if I just roll with the flow, be like the water, non-resistant, and, and just, I may not understand it. It may pinch and hurt a little bit, but I know at the end of the day, it's for my greater good. So basically, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm a woman, I'm a child of God, I'm a little girl. I, I, I'm realizing that, yes, 
we can have fun. So I'm just here about, I, I'm, I'm me just having fun. That, that's who I am. And that's why we love you, Dr. Anita. <laughs> you just, you are so much, I don't want to say fun because fun doesn't feel like a big enough word to capture oh. it, but you are fun. You're amazing. You know, there are times when I have been in the room with you and might be sad about something and you speak to me and all of a sudden my mood goes up because oh. I've encountered your energy. And I think that's a wonderful gift. And I agree, you know, it is hard. People would always tell me you wear your heart on your sleeve. You're going to always get hurt. And, you know, but it's who I am. That's I right. care an awful lot. And I think sometimes people, when you're told to not do something that is innately you, mm -hmm. it harms you. And like mm -hmm. you said, you begin to chase dreams. You begin to search out, seeking what you are not trying to be, but still trying to be it, even though everyone tells you not to. Absolutely. And so I want to ask you, because we are still in the midst of this pandemic and COVID just will not go away. Mm -hmm. And young people now are being impacted by it. How have you, well, how, first, how has this year been for you? And how have you dealt with the challenges? I mean, I can imagine that even as optimistic and as positive you are, that mm -hmm. there had to be some days where you were like, really? We got to be in the house again. Right. I, I, I just want to go out and hug somebody or I want to go out and have a cup of coffee or I want to go and walk and, you know, and not feel in fear. And then we just got through with the Derek Chauvin trial and there's still some more things going. How do you stay positive amidst all of those things? Well, you know, you know, firstly, you know, I, I do pray and I, you know, I believe faith, hope, and belief takes discipline mm -hmm. because it is during these trying times that that's when we know how disciplined we are in our faith. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I mean as far as like with the rose, you know, the rose with the thorn. For, uh, let me start back, for COVID, uh, I had just shared with a friend, I said, you know what, if this thing had happened 10 years ago, I would have been crazy. I would have gone crazy because I had not yet gotten with me. Mm. I had not yet been comfortable with my thoughts. I had not yet accepted that I loved me. So I would have been crazy being in my, being in the house, being, you know, living alone. Mm -hmm. Plus, you know, um, of course, you know, I pray you, you, uh, you know, like people that's, that's made their transitions, that's a, you know, that's a, that really gets to my heart, you know, when people, you know, people are suffering and things like that. So that is a down negative with this COVID thing. I do feel, you know, there's certain different types of theory, ideas. Some people say it's a conspiracy theory, different things. One of the things I do, and that's just me, one of the things I do believe how much so I'm not sure but I do believe that part of the COVID um keep having us stay still mm -hmm. I believe part of that is because I do believe that the, the planet revolted yes we have been abusing this planet we have been using this planet for years and it reminds me of, of of Karl Marx even though he talked to people he said you keep oppressing people long enough it's going to living they're going to revolt and one time I was walking down the hall in my in my home and it struck me I said oh my god the planet is living the planet said you know before I annihilate all this I'm gonna <laughs> stop this Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And now you're seeing some of the, I, you know, I was watching a documentary or something on the computers. I, I don't know where it was, but I was watching something. They showed a little chick walking near the beach saying this thing, they hadn't seen this type of bird in years because of the global, the, the pollution. Mm -hmm. And now you're seeing, you're seeing things like that. Mm -hmm. um, for me, yes, I miss, I miss my family. Like one time during 
from Thanksgiving. And I, I, I wasn't thinking, you know, I was thinking, okay, well, what are we going to do for Thanksgiving, y'all? And they would say, mama, uh, you know, it's COVID, you know, we, we got to be separated. I said, well, that sucks. I mean, because <laughs> I want them like, oh, well, wait, I was thinking, wait, wait, we put that away for, you know, we bring that back after the holiday. <laughs> I hadn't put the yeah, yeah, I hadn't put the two together. Like, wait a minute, now this thing is 24 7, 365. You know, just not just for no holiday. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we get through that. But uh, on the positive, I've got to share with you, Kimberly, I have met, I sitting in my chair right here, I have spoken all over the world. Wow. I have delivered message, the message of encouragement and upliftment and unfoldment all over the world. I programs, I've developed pro melodic mantra where, you know, I get your um, because I'm teaching myself keyboard. I still have some way to go, but I'm creating some music for my poetic affirmations. I've created a program, a chakra healing technique of meditation. Um, the ma uh, uh, it's a melodic mantra where I create your mantra music for you for like 10 minutes and in your voice, your natural voice, and then you record whatever a man, like I am enough, I am I am a child of God. But, and, and, and then I take that and I import it into that music for your own melodic magic. This is due to COVID. I don't mm -hmm. believe I would have been that creative. And, and it reminds me though too, Kimberly, that when I worked in the prison, when before I left 19 years, because I, I left 19 years of, of, of uh, uh, corrections uh, to, to continue my, my knowing my relationship with God. Um, before I did one thing, one thing, sis, that, that these inmates, I would talk with them and, you know, the, the, the awesome talent that they had. And I, we would just talk. And one thing I found out, there was one common thread, Kimberly. They all told me, they said they had no idea what they had until they were forced to wow. sit still and go within themselves. Mm -hmm. every single last one of them so mm -hmm. when I think of when I think of COVID you know as far as me and then I also work in my home you know because mm -hmm. you know work, you know telephone hearings and different things like that um so I you know just been for me it, it's been a creative moment and it's also been teaching me because I even bought like little green beans you know, because I learned about this Fibonacci sequence. I was like, okay, is that real? Is that, you know, true? There's this, geo, you know, sacred geometry and all this kind of stuff. I love this stuff. So I, I planted some green beans. And what I did, each green bean represented an idea. Uh -huh. And those ideas, you know, it just, you know, during this COVID time, those plants, they were my babies. So I, and I still have them on my table, I mean, because they're growing. I didn't know they grow stalks, you know, long mm -hmm. stalks. Mm -hmm. So I would talk with them. I still do. And, and nourish when, when one would get born, I write it in my book. Oh, so-and-so was born today. But one thing I noticed, and this is due to COVID. One thing I noticed though, this, this was proof positive for me that, you know, everything that I researched about the green bean, it said how it germinates in 10 days. Mm -hmm. None of my green beans germinated in 10 days. Now, really? I could, no, not, not one of them. The first, the earliest one that germinated was in 14 days. Now, mm -hmm. had I paid attention, had I been let, the, let, uh, let other thought influence me, I would have thrown that green bean away thinking, okay, it's not going to happen. Right. I didn't. And what that taught me was that an idea, just because it doesn't manifest or come about when you think it's supposed to doesn't mean it's not going to come out just have patience and that taught me that during COVID that taught me that mm -hmm. you know what I mean and to me that's that's monumental because now if I'm thinking of something or, or wanting something to uh to happen or I think it's supposed to be at a certain time I remember that green bean I remember saying no don't give up. Don't give up on that. You know, it's like the lotus flower. I don't see what's underneath. It's right. growing underneath. You know, mm -hmm. I just have to let it trust the flow. I just have to <laughs> let go, learn to let it go, trust that flow, and just know that everything is in divine proportion, time, and order. That is amazing that you said that. 
And I agree with you. I do think the planet revolts it because I've been paying attention to a lot of these studies where mm -hmm. in Venice, they were talking about how you could actually see the fish in the water, how the, the water became clear. Dolphins mm -hmm. had returned in certain places that they hadn't been in decades. I remember seeing the article about the little chick on the beach and, that, and they were saying, we thought it was extinct. They're still finding new species of insects and different animals. And wow. it's incredible because they have talked about the rate of pollution in certain mm -hmm. cities mm -hmm. and they talk about how it's gone down. Why? Wow. Because humans are in the house. And I have said since the beginning that this period should be a moment of reflection. Absolutely. And I agree that I think for a lot of people, it is sort of a cocoon stage mm -hmm. where we've been planted. Mm -hmm. you, you've got to nourish it. You've got to be patient and wait for things to grow. Absolutely. One of the things that concerns me though, you see people, and I've said this, and, and we see the numbers, people in marriages, divorces are up because people are at home now and they realize the person that they married or the person that they're with, they're like, wait a minute, yeah. this isn't what I thought. Yeah. You know, kids are struggling because they can't see family members or, you know, friends or, or what have you. Mothers are facing some really big challenges in terms of work-life balance, whether you work from home or not, or, or, you know, work for a company. I think it's important that people remember to be patient, but it's also important to remember to be still and find out who you are Absolutely. within. Absolutely. And Absolutely. You know, one thing too, Kimberly, um, I started this project and I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep it going. And I realized the subtle, one, one of the judges, one of my favorite judges would quote Mark Twain, that there's a difference between the lightning and the lightning bug. Mm. I just love that. Um, I recently began asking women, a friend of mine gave me this idea, so I can't take the idea say it's mine because it isn't. <laughs> uh, a friend of mine had given me an idea because I, I had called her, I mean, I Facebooked her because she's in Jersey. And that's another thing, so I've met so many people mm -hmm. because of this out of state. And I'll say, me, me, I said, oh, oh, guess what, guess what? I've been uh, invited to serve as a global chairperson in the sisterhood. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, 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 and she said, okay, I have one question for you. She said, what would you ask, what, what, what question would you ask women in this sector? I said, oh, that's easy. I would ask them, what's their relationship with God? Oh. And she said, uh, she said, well, what, what you may want to do? She said, why don't you start asking people? And I said, okay, I sure will. So I started asking, and I had to ask myself, but I started asking women. I said, okay, what's your relationship with God? And here's the lightning and the lightning bug. When I was getting responses, Kimberly, I noticed a lot of women gave me what God is to them, mm -hmm. what God means to them. Mm -hmm. Very few did I get what the relationship is. Mm -hmm. And I never, you know, noticed that even me, I mean, you know, like I said, I left 19 years employment to mm -hmm. really my path to, to really know my relationship with God. I mean, that's just, it's always been important all my life, you mm -hmm. know, uh, like that. So I started looking and I paying attention. I thought, I said, okay, well, let me see if I can clear this up for myself. Because as I'm reading it, you know, of course it's visual. So it's right there at me like, huh, I never thought about that. Mm -hmm. So I came to the point, I said, okay, well, let me do it this way. I said, what do my girls mean to me? And I said, they mean the world to me, what they mean. Mm -hmm. Then I said, okay, what's my relationship with them? And I said, well, my relationship, and without, without thinking like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, let me think, let me think. Without hesitation, I said, my relationship with my girls are trusting and loving. Mm -hmm. There's a difference. My girls mean the world to me and our relationship is trusting and loving. Mm -hmm. So I really came to, to I, I thought about, I said, you know, I wonder how many of us really have not defined our relationship with God. Mm -hmm. We know what, what God means or, you know, what God is, but our relationship, because there's a difference. I can have a, I can, you know, um, uh, something can mean something to me, but that doesn't mean I have a relationship with it. Exactly. 
exactly. you know, mm-hmm. so that's, that's been, um, that's, and I don't know how we just started talking about that. I don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> That was one of those Holy Spirit moments. Okay. (laughs) And so I will add to what you said about trusting and loving. And I would say safe because I tell my girlfriends all the time, I said, you are my safe space. Yeah. You are the space where I can relax. Mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about mommy, Kim. I need, you know, everybody needs something. I can chill out. I can relax in their presence. And I would say the same thing for God, that when I'm able to go to him in prayer, when I'm studying the word, I can relax. I can chill out because I'm in his presence. And I understand that. And it's funny because I talk to God and I'll be like, look, this is what it feels like. Mm -hmm. I know you know what it feels like. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you just... And I always tell him, I always say to God, please make it clear and plain. Cause you know, I ride the short bus. So, you know, know don't, don't send me, don't send me nothing complicated. Cause I'm not going to get it. Yeah. Just- so you, <laughs> hey, you, you, you already know me, you know, you already, you already. <laughs> right. So you, got, you got to make it clear and plain. Cause if you yes. start sending something with some complicated <laughs> legalese and, and some fees and some vows, I'm going to look at you and say, wow, see, I totally missed it. I, I didn't know what you wanted me to do. That's why I'm sitting here asking you again. And you looking like, why are you here again? I'm like, I didn't understand. I, hey, I didn't get it. <laughs> but, I, but I do think that is a wonderful point that you brought up about being able to define that relationship with God. Because and I keep telling people the same thing, Anita. If I didn't have God, I'd be crazy too. Because oh, there are days, you know, I'm managing virtual school with my kids. They're learning from remote. And I'm just yeah. like, you all are pushing it. Yeah. You know, going to the bathroom, hanging out. And I'm looking like, well, where is, why are you in the bathroom? Then you just go to the bathroom. <laughs> Don't be on the computer. <laughs> exactly. Or mommy, it's lunchtime. Didn't you just eat breakfast? Is it lunchtime already? You know, and it, it sounds like I'm disorganized. I'm not, right. but it's just so much. And literally my kids have every class. They have art, they have technology. They actually have gym at home. Mm-hmm. So they're running and doing exercises and all kinds of stuff. And I just sit there and I'm like, oh, father, okay. Just help me get through this moment. I'm okay. The boys are okay. We're fine. My husband is good, but it's a lot. And if I relied on myself Mm -hmm. solely, I would be batty. I'd be batty. Absolutely. And I think what is happening with a lot of people, when people say, you know what, this isn't the relationship that I wanted, they're realizing who am I and how do I fit into this? I don't have the relationship with my kids I thought that I had, Mm. or my kids don't have the relationship, you know, with their friends Mm. or, you know, whoever it is, people are waking up just like people are like, I don't want to go back to work, not in office. I like working from home. There was a whole article that was done on that not too long ago, where a lot of people are like, I like teleworking from home. Mm -hmm. It makes things easier. I don't want to go back. And so I know once COVID is over and people are asked to come back into the office, if, if that doesn't change, they're saying that it may change, it's going to be difficult for a lot of people. I think so too. The transition, I, I think mm-hmm. that's, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna take some acclimation, reacclimation. I yes. Think. yes. Yeah. And so if you don't understand what your needs are, understand who you are I know yeah you step right back into the unhappy place where you were before Mm -hmm. and I know a lot of people keep saying this and I I say it all the time life is short half Mm -hmm. a million people have passed away because of COVID you never know you know one thing that um that that brings me a sense of peace is that even though with the COVID because of COVID, there has not been a rise in suicide. Yes. And that that comforts my heart a bit, mm-hmm. you know, because because you would think if it, 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 there would have been an escalation, but mm-hmm. there had this is surprisingly it there there hasn't. 
Mm-hmm. There hasn't been a rise. Thing. Right, which is a good thing because there has yeah, been is. a rise. Absolutely. There has been a rise in depression and anxiety. However, Absolutely. I think with the, um, the, the uh, combination of telehealth and therapists, mm-hmm. you know, using creative methods to talk to people mm-hmm. in different groups, actually reaching out to make sure that they're checking on people for mm-hmm. mental health. I, I agree with you. I think that yeah. it's working. Yeah, I think, yeah, because of all the, the technology, like you said, the tele, telemedicine and everything, now it, it, it's it's more, uh, 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 things are more accessible now. You know, if, if I don't, because I don't have a car, that's no big deal. Exactly. You know, like my car has been down a um, couple of months and, and a friend, I was sharing with my friend, I said, well, I, ain't, I ain't tripping. I said, you know, I've been, you know, my, my, I said, my nephew, he's going to come on April 30th. Because when he called, he said, okay, and I can come April 30th. I, thought, I said, that's cool, fun. It could be April 30th, May, whatever. <laughs> because I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> I'm, I can walk where I'm going. I'm getting my exercise. It makes me get out if I, you know, to have a destination. So, you know, it's one of those. And I have this. I mean, I'm talking with people every day on, mm-hmm. on, on, you know, on the computer by way of internet. So it's like I'm not really by myself or anything. Right. Right. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I agree. I, I, I agree. There, there's ups and downs to everything, you know what I mean? Um, unfortunately, sometimes the downs can be very, very devastating. Um, mm-hmm. You know, um, that balance. It is a balance. balance. That balance. It is a balance. Mm-hmm. So, t- so tell us why you are so passionate about mental health because you developed a program and we'll talk about it in a minute, but tell us why you're passionate about mental health. Well, you know, <laughs> I'm passionate about mental health and I, I, I hope it ties in, but I can only say, you know, I'm passionate about it because, you know, just like with the suicide and, and depression, I'm passionate about it because my experience with, um, I, I understand depression, um, I understand fear, mm-hmm. I understand making so many mistakes because of the consciousness that I'm in. And one thing that I realized on my path is that all of the things, you know, when I think, you know, all of the things that I may have gone through, um, well, one thing is for my higher good, and I understand that to get me to this place, because I wouldn't be in this place, in this space, you know, had I not gone through it. But I'm passionate about it because on a, I just believe God is everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I hope I'm not sounding cliche-ish or little girlish or anything, but I gotta, this is just my heart. Mm -hmm. And and I believe that growing up, I had issues with this, with this being on the outside of me. I had issues with the gender. You know, I grew, you know, growing up thinking I'm not good enough because I'm female. You know, well, I must not be good enough because because this all powerful being is male. So, well, why aren't I male? I mean, I struggle with these things. Mm-hmm. I, I I really really struggled all my life with these things mm-hmm. until I I found a place and 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 I started learning that the presence, the power, of presence, and love of God resides within us. Yes. So I'm passionate about it because a lot of times the times that I was depressed is because I feel separated. And even today, even today, because I'm, I, although, you know, we're human. I also share with people too. Yeah, we ought to need to touch on that divine too. We are not all human. We're not all, we do have divinity within us. We mm-hmm. have to touch in, you know, tap into that. And, and that's what it breaks my heart when I think of someone being at the, I could just, cry every time I think of it. Someone being at the abyss of, of, of suicide ideation attempt and then actually killing themselves by suicide because I'm thinking at that moment they must have been so helpless, yeah. so hopeless, mm-hmm. so separated from knowing that, oh my God, there's a power, presence, and love that's within me that all I got to do is tap into it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that hurts me. That breaks my heart. 
that breaks my heart. So I'm very, very passionate about, you know, about mental health, about a state of being, about vibration, you know, vibing high, vibing high means that's what I mean, that discipline, you know, it's like, you know, take the time, you know, we pray all the time, we pray all the time, I said, quit talking so much, praying is talking, quit talking so much, and start listening, and that takes discipline, that means clearing out your mind, so that we can hear, we can actually hear, hear what we need to hear, and that's, you, you know, meditation, and then even, even during contemplation. So I'm just, you know, I, and I hope this makes sense, but I, I really, and my whole thing is, oh my God, if, if we just really understood that there is, however you want to say it, God, universe, creator, Allah, Satnam, whatever, you know, whatever word, whatever term, if we could only get into really get to that point, because I really do, I really do believe as a, as, as my belief that we, we talk about success and we talk about different things and, 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 and even happiness and things, but I really believe our main, our main purpose here on is, this earth is to get yoked back into our oneness with the creator. Absolutely. I, I believe that. And when, and when we're, when we're experiencing bouts of depression, I still do. I still do. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? I'll be out because I'm, I, I'm a cry baby and I'm, you know, I'll cry in a minute and start jumping up and down and, and having tantrums and you, you know, I, I'm, so, you know, talking with God and this and that, you, you know what I mean? I do, I do. But then I know, you know, I, I understand that after, and even crying, you know, crying at night, I know the unfoldment, the, the beautiful darkness of the unfoldment. I know when I wake up, there's going to be the awakening, you know, but before I didn't know. And I think that's what sometimes keeps us in that depressive state. It's like, okay, I'm okay. This is something that, I, that, that we're going through. Mm -hmm. And I think once we understand that, this is temporary. This is whatever is happening. Yeah, I've had my feelings hurt. Guys have hurt me. I mean, the mistakes that I've made, even sometimes I may wake up still at night with the guilt of something that I may have done in the past. And I have to say, Father, Mother God, help me with this. Mm -hmm. Help me clear this. Right now I'm doing a, a for, the second time, a 40 day, I call it karmic debt release, breaking an old habit. Wow. And it's a meditation every, every day, 6.30 on, on my page for 11 minutes, we meditate and it's breaking an old habit. And I call it karmic debt because my thing has always been not being good enough, uh, knowing enough, being enough. And I call it karmic debt because it's a karmic debt because if I am created in the image of, of, of the, the alpha and the omega, then how dare me say that I'm not enough. Mm -hmm. So that's my debt. I've created a debt because that, because I'm saying I'm not, I, I feel, or, or I believe that I'm less than, than what, than what I am. And if I'm created in, in, in not the skin, not the, not the glove yeah. we don don't, but if I'm created in the spirit, mm -hmm. then how in the world could I not be enough? That's right. How in the world could we not be deserving? How in the world could we not be word, uh, 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 worthy? Mm -hmm. How in the world could we not be these things? Yeah. You know what I mean? And I, you know, so I'm just, <laughs> that just, that's my, that's just very deep in my heart. <laughs> you said a word, you said a word, and I, I'm just going to remind you. So when we look at the world and we see celebrities and we see very wealthy people, who have all the trappings of life, who know everybody. Walk into a room, you remember Cheers, and it was like, hey, no hey, one. <laughs> right. And so, you know, sometimes people will be like, yeah, I want to be one of those people. You walk in a room and everybody knows you and everybody wants to talk to you. I'm like, mm, I, I don't want to be one of those people. I, I can be behind the scenes if necessary. But you have people who have all these things, mm -hmm. they still get depressed. They still turn to drugs and alcohol. They still turn to relationships that aren't fulfilling. They do bad things and then turn around and say, but you're a millionaire. You got a big fancy house. You come from a family that's well to do and you have this great, whatever it is that you do. And you over here doing something and we looking at you like, 
what's wrong with you? You got every because you don't have the relationship with God. And Anita, you know my story. You know my story. And I'll tell you that when I was at the lowest point in my depression, I couldn't hear God. Right, right. I, I couldn't hear him. And I and I had to tell um, friends of mine when the pandemic started, I was good for the first few months. Mm-hmm. But the deeper, like about six months in, mm-hmm. I was like, y'all, I'm just letting you know, it's, it's trying to come back, the depression. Right. And I, I'm the same way. And I had to start having real conversations with God. I said, God, Absolutely. I don't want to go back there. I remember what that was like. I I don't want to go back there. I need to be able to hear you. I need to be able to be in your presence. But it's also, again, understanding why am I angry? Why am I sad? Is this something from my past that I'm struggling with? Is it anxiety about the future? Because, you know, I have anxiety. And so a lot of times people will say anxiety is because you're concerned about the future, trying to control things. And mm-hmm. I know I have that issue. Mm-hmm. And then depression is you're living in the past. So mm-hmm. you know, if you got depression and anxiety, you just messed up because you, you know, you're not happy in either place because you can't right. live in the present. And as a person who likes to make plans, mm-hmm. you know, I plan events. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm the person that can make the list out and can put a schedule together. I can do that really well. Okay. But to sit and just be present mm-hmm. was very difficult. Yeah. And I had to learn to be able to sit in the moment, mm-hmm. put my phone down, yeah. concentrate on whoever's talking to me or whatever's happening in the moment and be okay. Mm-hmm. But we are spirits. We are spirits and we have to be one with God. We, you know, and I don't know if people understand that enough, which is why you're encouraged to be around other people who believe like you, so you can help encourage one another. Mm -hmm. Scripture from Bible, the Bible talks about that, Mm -hmm. about encouraging one another. Absolutely, you know, but you bring whatever you believe in. If Mm -hmm. not, you know, because me, I consider myself a religious pluralist. Okay. Because I embrace, understand, and respect the religions. You know, mm-hmm. I read the Bible. You know, mm-hmm. I have the Bible in my home. You know, mm-hmm. um, you know. So I do do that. But I do, I do consider myself a religious pluralist because I said it's about time that this division. I don't think that's meant to be the different mm-hmm. ideology, religious ideologies, keeping separate. One thing I want to share, I and I think I think this is absolutely fascinating. I uh, I call him my little brother. He lives on the island of Mauritius. And they say it's a little red, little dot in the middle of the Indian Ocean. Mm-hmm. I was just talking with he and his mom the other day. They were giving me a history. On this little island, this little dot in, in, in the middle of the Indian Ocean, you have Chinese, you have Indians, you have Africans, and you have, there's another culture. They speak English. Creole, um, um, Chinese, uh, there's another, some other languages, different names that I'm not able to pronounce or remember. But I asked him, I said, wait a minute. I said, on this little island, you have all this diversity. I said, how's everybody getting along? He said, we don't, don't have any issue. We don't have any issue. You have people believing in Buddhism, Hinduism, Judaism, uh, Allah, mm-hmm. Muslim. You have all this on this one island. And what I found fascinating, every single one of these people, the cultures, they are practicing their original culture. Nothing. I said, you know what? You guys are so blessed. I said, you were not stripped of, mm-hmm. of, of your culture. But mm-hmm. what I found fascinating, Kimberly, is that all of these different way of looking at God, there is no issue. That's wonderful. I said, you mean to tell me I can go um, and walk into a Chinese temple, or I can go into a Buddhist uh, temple, or mm-hmm. go into a church, a, a Christian church, and, and go into a mosque. He said, wait, 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 you can go everywhere but a mosque. He said, you got to be Muslim. I said, okay, well, I have to bring my brother. For the- <laughs> 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 go. <laughs> right, but, right. But, I, but I find that absolutely fascinating. Here we are, 
in the United States, all of this different animosity and di division and di mm -hmm. all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. And you got these people, you got at least four, four cultures on this little dot in the middle of the Indian Ocean. <laughs> and, it, and there's no issue. I find that absolutely fascinating. That I really do. I can't wait to get there to walk to walk on that ground. I really can't. And you just go. He said, "Yeah, I can walk five minutes, and and I can just stand right right aside of the Indian Ocean." Wow! But I think you you hit something when you it's said just... that. They're all connected. Mm -hmm. They all understand and respect one another. They have That's love right. in their hearts. That's and a I'm lot thinking. of times, and you know, I have gotten to the point where when we hear racist statements and people screaming all kinds of things that are hateful, I'm like, you have hate in your heart. We, we don't have to go any further than that. You have hate in your heart. And until we address the condition of the heart, oh, which, a, which aids in the development of the brain, in how you think, how you feel, how you understand, how you empathize or have compassion for people. Mm -hmm. you, you know, some of the many issues that we have, they won't be resolved because the heart is not right. Their heart is sick, unfortunately. And I know that seems simplistic, but when you look at it, you know, when someone's a racist, they're hating on you. Right. That's, that's not of God. Yeah. It's, just like, you know, God created animals of every different color, mm -hmm. stripes, designs. He created people with different colors. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you said it may sound simplistic, but it is. You know, you know, I, I, I say kiss it. Keep it simple, sweetheart. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 um, I mean, Yeshua says, you know, in order to get to the kingdom, which you go inside, you do it as a little kid. Kids are yeah. not complicated. They're not we make things complicated mm -hmm. because we believe we, we now we're of this intelligence and we brought, we're of this 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 realm or whatever it is that 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 we feel that we know or, or we have to know everything. Children are not like that. Children are innocent. So yeah. you, I, 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 I agree with you. Yeah, I don't believe that so, sounds simplistic. I, I believe that it is racism. When you peel that onion, ain't number fear. We mm -hmm. do things either out of fear or or out of love. Either respect it or we don't, and, and it's that's fear. Right. And and that's simplistic. But um, but you know what I mean. There, I don't believe there's a gray area in between mm -hmm. that. You mm -hmm. know, it's like if I'm driving a car, either if I'm if I'm driving within the law, either I'm driving to the speed limit because I fear getting caught or I drive the speed limit because I respect, I love the law. Exactly. There's no, there's no in between, in between there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We make things complicated. Yeah, I really do. I believe, I just, I so agree with you, Kimberly. I, you know, I said, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we, I, you got to talk about, because you created and you founded the In Guy Poetry and Music Publishing um academy talk to uh -huh. us a little bit about that what is that okay um well see on guy creative thought academy the word on guy came from in the a long 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 time ago i was um uh when my grandparents were alive and they lived on log cabin in detroit here and i was looking through my grandmother's book it was a book of Maasai, mm -hmm. and i love words and i was looking through her book and it came up this word on guy and i said oh my god that's so pretty, E-N-G-A-I. I said, that is so pretty. What does that mean? Well, when I kept looking through the book, it meant it means God. Ah. That's the Maasai word that mm -hmm. means God. So I kept it, I stored it, you know, I stored it. And then eventually I registered, I registered it with, um, uh, then it was um, uh, Cobo Hall, where mm -hmm. you go down there and register. Uh -huh. So I registered the name and just just kept it. And then it, it evolved because since, um, really um, from after 1998, after leaving corrections, that's when things started uh, evolving, creating programs. I've created several different programs, coaching programs, um, um, all types of tools and um, different things that I've used throughout the years. So the academy consists of, on the on guy cons consists of that, the academy of classes, workshops, um, seminars, 
um, like I said, the tools like my book and and um, just just different different things like that. And then the poetry and music publishing that came about when I um, I collaborated with a, a, a an excellent creative musician, Guyman Inslee, and he mm -hmm. created the music to my poetic affirmation before you did be sure. Okay. And then, and when we did that, um, I had to register with um, with uh, oh shoot B B and B. I can't I, don't, I can't think. I, it's been a minute. But one the music publishing because there's two of them, and I chose BMI BMI publishing okay. the music. Okay. So and then they sent me something saying, well, you got to create a name before you register. So then then that then I created the the I'm guy uh, poetry and music publishing because I knew I did well I didn't know then but I did I, one thing I did know when I was in his studio and he's mixing the sounds and I had them headphones on and just grooving girl I was like I want to do this <laughs> I said I want to do this when we went to the mixing uh, the the it was mastered by uh um uh, 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 Studio A and and this guy Eric Hobson he he did the the mixing and I was like I, I mean I was in my element I said oh yeah I want to learn how to do this so when I did I got music and po poetry and music at that time I didn't know I was like I want to say well the music I said well I, I just left it some it, 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 inside of me I. I, I know inside of me knew, but consciously I hadn't connected it where it was going to go yet. But since then, I, I bought myself a rolling keyboard. Um, <laughs> I have created some music to my poetic affirmations and different things like that. So that's how all of that had, had come and I've come about in the name um, Angai. And I had a lot of different names, but I always said that Angai was the umbrella of okay. it all. Okay. So in other words, saying God is the umbrella of it all. And he is. Wow. <laughs> wow. So you went on this fantastic conference a couple years ago, right before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And you talked about how it changed who you are as an artist. Can you talk a little bit about that? Oh, yes. Okay. You know, the first time um when we went to thailand mm -hmm. yeah when i went to thailand with the michigan women's leader delegation tanya mcneil weary she's the founder and also Matthew, beautiful mm -hmm. sister she encouraged me to go you know mm -hmm. and when i when i went the first the first thing before i went to thailand I had been praying, just saying, you know, I like to travel with my spoken word. Mm -hmm. And I left it at that. You know what I mean? I didn't say I want to go to California. I didn't want to say I want to go to Canada. And, you know, I started to locally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah with like going to Detroit, uh, uh, Book City. Uh -huh. Uh, uh -huh. And um, started doing that. And I just left it at that point. And then when it, going to, before Thailand, you know, a sister, I, it's something how things go. I was invited to share my tap into you experience at this workshop. At that workshop, I met this sister who was also volunteering her services, what she has. Mm -hmm. A couple of months later, she called me. She said, Nita, um, I want to invite you to a networking meeting. Now, you know, I, you know, they're, they're okay. I'm, I'm not really into the, you know, the networking and different, because I, I guess I've done it for years, even before it was popular. So I guess, you know, whatever. So I'm like, oh, okay, you know, okay. So anyway, and I, and, and I, I live kind of out, you know, due to, you know, my budget, you know, where I'm at, I, I have the space that I can afford. So anyway, I was saying, but, you know, she said, I'm networking. I said, okay, I said, I'll, I'll, I'll think about it because I've been going driving when I go places it'd be like 30 45 minutes I said I'm getting kind of tired of going you know drive us along but anyway she said it's going to be in this city and I said okay that's not that far and I almost didn't go but it was something in me that said you you need to go mm -hmm. you need to go to this 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 networking so I go to the networking and when I, I was a little late 
And as I'm coming in, once I get in, this sister who was so warm, she just invited me, said, have a seat. Who are you? What's your name? What you do? And then she said, you need to come to Thailand. And I said, Thailand? What do you mean Thailand? She said, yeah, we're going to Thailand and leave that good. She said, you do poetry? You, you know, then you need to come and, and experience this. And I was like, I don't know. So then, you know, she would call and say, you, are you going to go? And I said, you know what, Tanya? I said, you know what? I'm going to go. Then after that, she said, you know, I want you to submit your proposal to, to speak, to do your spoken word. I said, I, you know, are you kidding? I said, no, I mean, you know, oh. <laughs> I said, I don't know, Tanya. She, and then she kept at me, she, you know, just gently, gently, lovingly. She said, I want you to submit your proposal. So I did. And then it came back that it was accepted. You know, it was tap into the power in you. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh my gosh. So when we went and then, sharing it on just sharing my my spoken word that I consider you know not being cliche -ish again but it's just messages from the creator mm -hmm. on another soil around the world it just I can't just I can't describe the feeling I just it's just one of those, it's just, just such a, oh my gosh. I mean, it was just wonderful. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, I mean, I enjoyed that spoken word now, but then we go to this rescue place of these animals. Oh, wow. And when we're going there, I mean, I, we're going there to, you know, to go look at the tiger cubs, you know, to hold them. But mm -hmm. as I'm walking past, I see this, you know, this, this, this it's a cub, but this black panther just walking, you know, and I said, that's the one I want to get into the cage with, because mm -hmm. I love kitty cats are my favorite, and Black Panther is my favorite feline, so I, I said, okay, I said, okay, my son, I said, okay, am I going to do, I mean, you know, because this is a big rascal, he's a pup, but it's, you know, a cub, <laughs> but it's a big rascal, so when I get, when I get, I said, I know, I said, I know what I'm going to do, I'm going to trust, I said, I'm going to trust, I'm going to trust, when I get to that cage, if my stomach feels any kind of queasy, I know not to go in there. Mm -hmm. I said, if my stomach feels peace, I'm going to trust and I'm going to go in. Okay. When we get to that cage, I felt peace. Wow. I went in there. That rascal jumped in my arms. I was able to hold him. He walked on my shoulder, 60 pound, a beautiful black panther. Wow. I fed him a bone of some sort. That those two experiences, Kimberly, I, I mean, it, it, it I, I would never would have imagined. But when I got back, that was the confirmation. It says, see, you didn't nitpick and put your goals so tight that you didn't give me room to give me you 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 didn't close your fist so tight that you didn't put it all down make sure it's, i want to go to california want to go go to go to, all i did was said i want to i put it out in the universe and said i want to travel and the <laughs> universe god took me to thailand mm -hmm. look at that Look at that. And it's not that I had a whole bunch of money either because the girlfriend would say, she said, I don't understand it neither. She said, you, you know, I, what, uh, <laughs> and I made no shame in my game. Um, the money that I help unemployment uh, worker, unemployed workers get, they uh -huh. get more money than I make. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just, you know, by the time they get this money and everything, listen, they do. And she said, I don't understand. She said, you don't make a lot of money. She said, but you don't went to Thailand. You don't went to Egypt. I said, that's God. That's it. I don't have to have a lot of money. God is the source, supply, support, and, and substance of everything in my life and affairs. And I, I'll, I'll say it and shout it to the rooftop because I have learned. I have learned that, yes, it is. I don't need a quarter. <laughs> because <laughs> if it's for me it's gonna happen that's it's, right it's gonna happen that's right that was phenomenal okay so now because our time is 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 slowly ticking away oh okay you, so you gotta tell us what tapping you what tapping to you is 
Okay, tap into the tap into you movement is simply trusting, touching on trust and tapping into you. The T is, is, is tapping into the trust of you. The A is acknowledging the power within you. The P is for, for realizing the power within you. The N is, is, for, is for bringing the unity together. The two is peace and love. It, uh, lo understanding and knowledge equals peace and love. The U is, is, is uniting with your soul urge. And and that's the tap into you, tapping into the power, presence, and love of the spirit of God within us. The tap Amen. into you movement. <laughs> Do you have something for us? Are you sharing a, a piece with us or anything? Oh, yeah, I sure can. Okay, because earlier we talked about um, rose-colored glasses. That's right. Okay, okay. So this one, <laughs> this one is uh, called Q&A. And I hope you guys like it. Okay, Q&A. How come when we are all grown up, no longer can we hop and skip. Responsibility is the ruler of the mind and fearfully we play, oh Lord, don't let me slip. How come to be grown is not to act like a little boy or a little girl dashing in and out of serenity as we prove our worth to the world? Why not we can't play tag, jack, hide and seek, jump rope and things? How come we have to keep quiet when it's only a song we wanna sing? What for grown up is so serious, lacking silliness, jolliness, and being gay? How come if people see us being silly and laughing, only judgmental things are what they'll say? How come we can't have money if we want laughter and an easy way? How do we get this money anyway? It's the creator, I say. Hmm. See, we are angels of the universe, dancing our way to the right. God shows us this way, that way, turn left and be with the light. We listen and hear the gentle whisper in our ear. In our own verse coming from the universe, go ahead and dance, my child. Be caring, loving, and free. Why? The treasures are yours to be told. Because love is key. And today, I'm going to be free and connect with the little princess inside of me. Thank that you. was amazing. I love it. I love it. That was the perfect way to end our interview this evening, Anita. That was fantastic. So now tell us where we can find you. Tell us um, where people can find your work, all sure. that good stuff. Thank you. Yep, I have an Etsy store. Um, let's see, that Etsy store. Yeah, you could just type in my name, Anita. Anita, uh, Lord have mercy. <laughs> <laughs> Anita, uh, I forgot. It's Etsy. It's Etsy, Etsy, store. Vibe and High. There we go, I forget. Because that's the LLC, Vibe and High collection. Yep. Yeah, uh, and then also I'm on Facebook, Dr. Anita Caprice. Um, I have several pages there. I have my, a Vibe and High um, with Anita Caprice. That's my spoken word page. Vibing with a Kiss. That's more of the the prayer meditation. You could go, go on there. Excuse me, go on there and 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 do some meditation. Find a little 11 minute meditation if you want. You can go on there and then also connect with me uh, through the private private chat and everything. My um my email address is spokenword.etc at gmail.com and then also my phone number uh because I'm, I'm old school i like to you know i like that, that, <laughs> that human touch kind of thing even the voice and that's 313-605-8220 and i just want to throw out there too also that um my family and i we are um i'm just loving this that we are currently uh raising money to build a school in Burkina Faso, Africa. So yes, yes, so I'm, we're so happy about that and things are going well um, uh, with that too. And, and, and um, yeah, so my products, my, my book, my Reflections of an Angel, and I've just converted that to an ebook. So the ebook, The Reflections of an Angel, now how that is, is that um, your, your, your name is throughout the, poll, throughout the book. So you're, you're mentioned about 92 times throughout the book. So it's like we're talking as you read the book kind of thing, as you read each poetic affirmation. I'm really excited about that. So yeah, so that's, um, that's where you can, can reach me and that's, that's my, my contact. 
thank you, Anita, for, for being on here. You definitely gave us good vibes and gave us some wonderful positivity and some important things to think about, especially when we talk about connecting with God, our creator, and connecting with ourselves, understanding who we are and when we trust. Mm -hmm. yeah. how good things actually happen for us that's just yeah. amazing so thank yeah. you for being on i hope that you will join us again and come back and share some more poetry with us Ooh, i sure will kimberly thank you so much my sister you know i love and appreciate you when you <laughs> reached out and i'm like yeah of course <laughs> <laughs> and I was so excited when you said yes, because I was like, I wanted to have you on the show just so we could have a conversation yeah. like, because I love being able to talk to you. As I said, you truly are a force of, uh, I want to say a force of nature, but I want to say a force of energy, positive energy that just you, you, you impact every person that you meet and oh. and you bring us up and you and you make us better so thank you Precious. for that and oh. thank you for all that you do oh you are so well i'm, I'm only your mirror my sister <laughs> <laughs> well, I thank you for that. Thank you guys for tuning into the Kim B. Davis show. You know that you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok. Bachelor is spelled B-A-T-C-H-E-L-O-R. You can find out more about me at KimBDavis.com. You can also find us on YouTube. If you type in YouTube.com forward slash Kimberly Bachelor Davis, you can also listen to this show on Apple, Spotify, Google, and Stitcher. Thank you guys again for tuning in. Remember, keep your vibes up, stay positive, keep God first. And as always, remember, be magnificent. Absolutely.